the witnesses. When uh, you are done testifying, sir, uh, Sergeant Curtis will have the opportunity to cross-examine you. I'll then accept the closing argument from Mr. Thomas, closing argument from Sergeant Curtis. I will render a decision as to guilty or not guilty, uh, reference these charges, um, conclusion of the trial. Any questions about the process? Lawrence Pierce. Um, Pierce. Yes, sir. Can I have Pierce, sir? Sir, um, would you please place your hand on the ball and raise your right hand for me? I'll take it off and raise your hand, please. That'd be fine. Uh, raise your right hand, please. Yes, Do you affirm the total truth in front of me in your proceedings? Yes, sir. All right, so you can have a seat. Sergeant Curtis will be proceeding your right. On the date of October 11th of this year, did you have an opportunity to call the police? Uh, yes, sir, I did. Okay. What happened on that date? Uh, we were in the Mechanicsburg Parade, marching in the parade, when I was accosted by the gentleman to my left, uh, by the man in the suit, and I immediately shouted out to the police to assist me, and uh, they could not hear me because of the noise and the parade. The gentleman came out into the parade session and tried to take my mask off and my beard, grabbed me from behind the neck, and uh, crunched my sign up to remove it off of my body. Uh, the police officer on the bike paddled by, did not hear us. I then found a parade uh, marshal who was able to get a hold of Sergeant Curtis, and they split us up, and uh, I was able to join the parade on the other side of the U. Okay, kind um, of take you back here. You said we were marching. Who was that? Uh, the parading atheists of Central Pennsylvania: Carl, myself, and my son. Okay, so there's three of you total that were marching. Yes, sir. For the parading atheists. Yes, sir. Okay, and um, how were you dressed? I was dressed and depicted as the Prophet Muhammad in a gown with a, uh, you know, like a I don't know what they're called a head a head wrap uh, as a zombie. It's the Halloween parade, so uh, the theme of the parade, you know, we dressed up as scary zombies like, you know, the majority of people did as scary ghosts or goblins. Okay. And then you had a beard? Yes, sir. And how was that attached to you? Glued to my face. It was kind of like made out of yak hair, or, you know, fake beard hair, but it was glued because I had green makeup. Uh, Okay, so this group of the Parading Atheists of Central Pennsylvania got together and decided to participate in the Mechanicsburg Halloween Parade. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, you dressed up as a zombie, which is a very common uh, Halloween depiction, somebody in a zombie costume, correct? Yes, sir. And yet... Uh, being a zombie wasn't enough. You had a sign that said you were also Muhammad the zombie. Yes, sir. What reason did you feel that it was necessary to put Muhammad on your sign? It is in the Quran that Muhammad rose from the dead and he lived, and anybody that raises from the dead and lives and walks around is a zombie by definition. Okay. Uh, we were following the you, theme of the parade that okay. we had no. in our, our group. All right. But your, your testimony is that Muhammad raised from the dead? It's not my testimony. It's a testimony of the Quran. Uh, well, you should try reading the Quran sometime. Uh, How long did the actual confrontation between you and my client take place? Somewhere in the realm of about uh, 48 seconds. 48 seconds. And and you know that because you were able to turn on a, your camera and do a video of yes, this confrontation, correct? correct. And uh, then you took this particular video and you adapted it and placed it on YouTube, uh, correct? This says Muslim attacks atheists. Attacks atheists. Correct. You, you didn't say mu Muslim zombie attacks atheists, you just said Muslim attacks atheists. Well, he wasn't dressed as a zombie, sir. 
Okay, I understand. You didn't understand the question. That's okay. By the way, this uh, thing that you placed on YouTube, you placed it in such a way that people could send in comments, correct? Yes. And in fact, you answered some of the comments that were placed on there, correct? A few. Uh, Mr. Pierce, I want to show you this document. And what I'm interested in down here where the X is, is that one of your responses to a comment made on the YouTube site? Please read the whole yes. thing. Um, you're absolutely wrong. How could you see if everything was dark of what the camera showed? Uh, where were you? Following us for three blocks with him? Question mark. I shot him on the camera walking alone. The guy didn't touch me, question mark. You're full of it, and you can hear us rustling around. You're another Muslim-infected person. The guy didn't call the cops on me. I found the cops and reported him. No report was filed on me. Get somewhere, and may you see Muhammad of Islam in the toilet after taking a dump. All right, and that's your comment. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Your Honor, uh, oh, one other thing. That's the extent of the damage to this thing? That's correct. After pulling it, wrestling with you, and all that stuff, trying to pull it off your head, that's the extent of the damage? Any physical contact with another citizen is illegal in a harmful manner that causes alarm. I understand. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Sergeant Curtis, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in front of me during proceedings? I did. I'm Sergeant Brian Curtis. I'm the mechanic for the police department. I've been so employed since July 2001. On the date of October 11th of this year, I was assigned to work uniform patrol, assigned specifically to patrol the uh, south side of the parade route as it was the uh, Halloween parade the borough of Canterford on that evening. On that date, in approximately 1948 hours, I was contacted uh, through county control and asked to respond to the location of uh, Frederick and West Keller Streets for for a, uh, a individual that was there um, to file a complaint in regards to a uh, individual that was walking the parade. It was kind of unclear is exactly what the call was because um, then there was a, a second call that was placed that we were dispatched to basically that same area to meet another individual in regards to something that had occurred within the parade. Uh, I arrived there along with a couple of other officers and we were able to ascertain that it was uh, Mr. Pierce who previously testified and um, the defendant who was seated next to uh, counsel at the defense table uh, they had had an altercation in the parade. Uh, Mr. Pierce, uh, as he testified to, had been marching the parade as a zombie Muhammad of Islam. And uh, the defendant was offended by this and walked out to the parade and basically tried to remove the sign from him and get him to stop parading. Uh, the two calls were placed by the victim and the defendant. Uh, I spoke to the defendant and he was, he was upset uh, by his own admission by what uh, was depicted in the parade as far as the zombie. Uh, Muhammad saying that it was against his uh, Muslim religion for people to do such a thing and that he attempted to uh, stop it himself. Um, after he was unsuccessful, he stated that he called the police and he wanted us to uh, stop him from marching the parade. And it was my understanding from what he was saying, basically arrest him for what he was doing in the parade. Um, he admitted to the fact that he did confront the individual, that he did lay hands on him, but he couldn't say specifically what he had done. He said that he really couldn't uh, remember at that time. After talking to Mr. Pierce and getting his understanding of things, uh, I asked Mr. Pierce to file a statement and bring it to me um, so that you know, we would basically file anything or look at the written statements at that point in time. And, uh, the defendant was told the same thing to file a written statement, and that, uh, at that point in time, I would look into it and file the appropriate charges at that point. Uh, after receiving the statement from Mr. Pierce, I did file a harassment citation against him in violation of uh, Crimes Code Section 8, or Title 18, Section 27. 09A1, and that was the fact that the defendant did, uh, with the intent to harass another, um, subjected the victim to physical contact. 
Uh, just briefly, uh, did you get a written statement from uh, Mr. Talat? I did not. And are you the one who interviewed Mr. Talat? Yes. Uh, Mr. Talat did not admit that he tried to remove the sign from the person's head, did he? No, he basically said that um, he had confronted him and that there was physical contact between the two. All right. uh, I have no other questions, sir. I would call the uh, Talat, to the defendant, Albanye. Would you please approach? While standing before me, would you please raise your right hand for me? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in front of me during the proceedings? Yes. Uh, Mr. Thomas, the major to uh, Mr. Talat, how old are you? Uh, 46. Are you married? Yes. Have children? Four boys. Four boys? Yes. How old are you? Uh, 14, 11, 9, and 4. Uh, do you live in Mechanicsburg? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, on the night of October 11th, the night of this incident, uh, what were you doing that night? I took my kids to watch the, the parade. And who went with you to watch the parade? My wife, my youngest two kids. Uh, and uh, ten, eight, nine years old, and four years old. Okay. And uh, do you recall uh, where you were when you were watching the parade with your family? Exactly. Uh, I don't know the name of the street, but I was in a Keller Street. All right. So you were somewhere on Keller Street. Yes, sir. Right. And you're watching the parade come by. Yes. And uh, do you remember the? Uh, Parading atheists of Central Pennsylvania coming by. Yes. What is it that you recall about them as they pass by? First of all, when I saw him pass by me, uh, like I get shocked because I don't believe whatever I see. And my son, the youngest one, nine years old, they look at me, and my wife shows she gets shocked too. Whatever she say, my nine years old, he look at me, and first of all, I try to get to teach my kids how to respect everybody. Any religion, it doesn't matter not your religion, it doesn't matter your color. I teach them to be respectful for everybody. And I get this look from my son. He look at me, did this guy, he's acting our Muhammad, which is, I teach my son to house Muhammad important for us. Mm -hmm. And he gave me this look and he asked me. So, and at the same time, I teach my son how to respect everybody, respect every religion. Yeah, so, so what, what how, do you how do can when I raise my kid like that? So when your son looks at you, and and I ask what, me, do you what do you do at that point? So I, I, keep, I keep quiet. My wife, she kept quiet because we was like, we can't believe we, see, we saw that. Okay. And after that, I said, no, I need to say something. I need to do something for my, my son, my family, for my religion, for my prophet. All right, and so what did you do? Actually, he, he passed by. So after that, and when I take the decision to say something or do something, I get close to him. I told him like four words. I told him, you need to stop doing that. That's ridiculous. You need to take the sign off. And he said, what are you talking about? I told him, I'm going to call the car for you. And he said, the other guy he start like this guy's practice, like, they practice for this kind of issue. The other guy start screaming, a free country dude, and this kind of stuff. I told him, all right, I will call the cop right now. I get the phone, I call the cop. I was nervous. I can remember 911. The first time I dialed 944. I, I, I tried to remember the number. So I got 911, I called the number, and the somebody answered the phone, I was on the phone, and she asked me, where are you right now? Which I know I'm in Keller Street, but she need to find out which intersection I been. So I bus those guys, I bus them, I walked in front of them until I find Frederick Street with, I'm sorry, Keller with Frederick. That point I stopped, and the, the cops was in the phone with me. I, I, I told them just wait. I need to find out where I'm at. 
Did so, you stay there until you had an opportunity to talk to the police? Yes, I stayed there. I told and right now I'm in Keller City by three. All right. Now, I want to back up here a little bit. Okay. Uh, do you see this sign? Is this the sign that he was wearing? Yes. And uh, did you touch this sign no. or try to remove it from his body? No. Did you have any physical contact no. with him when you confronted him? No. Did you, do you have any recollection that you told the police that you had contact with him? What you mean, sir? Well, the police officer testified no. that you told him that you did make contact with him. Did no, you I... ever touch him physically? No. no. So you never made physical contact no. with him? And how long uh, were you there talking to him about, you know, you like just I said, like, this four words, and with this, the guy started screaming, he said, this free country, dude, what are you doing? And I believe, like... All right. Now, when you walked away from him to call the police, did you yeah. encounter them anymore at all? No, 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 more at all. Just, I bought them. I tried to find where I'm at. All right. No further questions. You're at the parade with the White Panther family. You say you see this guy walking up, and you're shocked by what you see. In fact, you even said that you couldn't believe. I told you. So, okay. And your nine-year-old son, is he, is he the youngest or is he the oldest? No, he's like in the middle. In the middle? Yeah. Your nine-year-old son looks at you and, and kind of says to you, Dad, you know, yeah. what's the deal? What, what's, what's going on? And your wife kind of says the same thing. Same thing. Okay. So you stand there being the man of the family, and you have your wife who's questioning the ability for this guy to do this, and now your son who kind of looks up to you and says, you know, basically, you treat us to respect things, and this guy is disrespecting my religion. Exactly right. So not only are you upset about the fact that this guy is disrespecting your religion, but now what's further upsetting you is your family is also upset by this, and they're looking to you to do something. Mm, not by this way. The first of all, that affect me, I upset me because he re re revoked, re remote, revoked my profit. Okay. Okay. So, and, and, but and your your wife and your son look at you, and they're kind of looking at you, and your thought process is, is I should do something about this. Definitely no. Before they look at me, I was taking the decision to do something. Okay. Okay. Um, and while you're standing there, what's what made you start to think I should do something I shouldn't? What, what was, why was there such a... First of all, I saw that whatever he doing is by the law is, uh, uh, is not allowed to do. That's my opinion. That's what your opinion is? My opinion. Whatever he doing is not allowed to do that. Okay. So that's why I, I, when I get close to him, in my, uh, the decision I will take, I'm going to call the cop. Okay. So, but I tried to explain to him that whatever he's doing is not nice. That's not... Uh, that's what Muhammad of Islam, he looked like this, nobody knows how he looked like this. We respect him, so I don't want anybody to okay. understand. Okay. So I tried to explain, but these guys like to me, like, do you know what they're doing? So I I told him, I'm going to call the cop. I don't know if he, he called me, he called me, go ahead and call the cop. I don't know if he used the F word or not, I'm not sure. Okay, but, but your thought process is, is that your opinion at that point in time, he's breaking the law. You step out to the parade because you're going to do something about it. Yeah. Now, there was other people that were in the parade that were zombies, too. Do you recall that? The other people? Yeah, wasn't there other atheists that were parading? Did you recall? I, I, I don't notice that until I get close to these guys. Okay. Yeah. So, but you didn't do anything to the other two people? No. It was just even, your profit. Even, even the three people, I don't do nothing. Okay, but it was just your profit that you were particularly yes. enraged about yes. and shocked yes. and disbelief. Yes. Okay. Even if he do that, the, the other the, for the Jesus, I would do the same thing because but, I. But you I, didn't, right? I did not. Okay, you didn't that night. No. You're saying you would now, but you didn't that night. Yeah, because he was okay. he's, he was in my side. The and other you, guy was in the other side. Okay. And you were nervous. I was kind of nervous. So nervous that you couldn't even dial nine one one. Yeah. Okay. And so then when you walked up to him, you just said something to him, is what your testimony is here today. But after I talked to you, you know, based upon the fact that you are so upset by this, based upon the fact that all of this stuff kind of happened so quickly that you can't even down the phone, is it a possibility then that you did 
made physical contact with him, but maybe you just don't remember now? No. Okay. So what you said that night then, when you said that, yeah, we did make physical contact, but you told me specifically you couldn't remember exactly what happened, that is now, was that a lie then, or is it a lie now? I, I'm saying, like what I'm saying, can no, you is, ask? Is it, is it, it's either then or now. Was it, was it then when you said that you did have physical contact, or you, were you not making a true statement then, or is it a true statement now that you're making? I'm just kind of confused. At one point, said you, at time, the date of the incident, you said you did make physical contact with him. That's what you told me. And today, you're saying no, that you didn't. So, which version would be true? Okay. When I did you, I remember when I did you asked me, did the guy push you? I told you I was nervous. I'm not sure if he pushed me or not. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That's what was. That's what I understand from pushing. If this guy pushed me, I told you I'm. I was kind of nervous. I'm not sure if he pushed me or not. Okay. You heard his testimony here today. Yes. So I'm assuming then that everything that he said, that's all a lie. Yes. Everything that he's saying is all made up. I have nothing to go. Redirect. Uh, Does the test have anything else to present? Uh, just argument. You know. Proceed with closing argument. Uh, Your Honor, I'm going to preface whatever I say by the, uh, the uh, statement that even if this court were to find that there was contact of some sort between the defendant and uh, the victim, uh, it does not rise to the level of the contact contemplated by the crime of harassment. Uh, there very well may have been some incidental contact. My client basically says there wasn't any. He also says that he was really nervous. But he denied ever trying to take that sign off the guy's head, and he denied ever having any, you know, uh, aggressive contact with this man. And the whole purpose of the harassment statute is that whenever the person does make contact with the victim, they have to do so with the intent to cause harassment, annoyance, or alarm. Uh, my client's only purpose for approaching this man is that he's at a family event in Mechanicsburg, it's the annual Halloween parade, and he's there with his family and this victim uh, you know, decides to wear a costume that not only is appropriate for Halloween, but also that has to make a statement with regard to uh, the Muslim religion. And yes, he has, in his country, the right to make that statement. My client is not from here. You can tell by his accent that he's immigrated here. Uh, and in his country, you just don't do that. You don't go making fun of Muhammad. And he thought that it was a crime, or it should be a crime, that this guy uh, was making fun of Muhammad. And that was his purpose for approaching that guy, was to get him to stop. So to the extent that my client was acting with an intent to stand up for Muhammad, and a mistaken belief that this guy should not be allowed to, to make fun of my religion in this fashion, uh, that's the intent with which he entered this entire situation. He didn't go there with the intent to physically hurt the guy, to push him, strike him, kick him, shove him. He went in there with the intent to confront him about what he was representing. And so even if there was some incidental contact that took place during that, uh, it is not, does not rise to the level of a criminal offense. It's de minimis in comparison to what the statute was designed to prevent. I would ask that you find him not guilty. Just that um, his intent may not have been when he's leaving out of the parade to, to, to go and cost this individual, but that's what he did. We had the testimony from the victim, and it basically comes down to two different scenarios. The victim is saying that he grabbed him by the neck, turned him around, grabbed him by the beard, tried to rip the beard off, tried to take the sign off around his neck. Um, the defendant on that evening said to me specifically, there was physical contact. Now today he's saying that no, that there wasn't. Um, whether it's diminished, 
based upon whether it's a little bit of contact or not, is based upon um, what the defendant's saying. And you have a victim testifying to the fact that all of that was, in fact, done. And it was the defendant's own testimony that was upsetting to him and that he was going out there to stop this thing. Whether it's um, criminal in his country or not, there's no bearing as to what occurs here in the borough of Mechanicsburg. And what he did is definitely criminal and definitely rises to a harassment. Well, having had the benefit of having spent over two and a half years in predominantly Muslim country, I think I know a little bit about the faith of Islam that they have about the Quran here. And I would challenge you, sir, to show me where it says in the Quran that that Muhammad arose and walked among the dead. Um, I think you misinterpreted it. So before you start mocking somebody else's religion, you might want to find out a little bit more about it. It kind of makes it look like a doofus. And Mr. Tongs is correct. And many other Muslim-speaking countries, or excuse me, many uh, Arabic-speaking countries, the only Muslim, um, something like this is definitely against the law there in their society. In fact, it could be punished by death. It frequently is in their society. Here in our society, we have a constitution that gives us many rights, specifically First Amendment rights. It's unfortunate that some people use the First Amendment to deliberately provoke others. I don't think that's what our forefathers have really intended. I think our forefathers intended that we use the First Amendment so that we can speak with our mind, not to piss off other people, other cultures. Which is what you did. I don't think you're aware, sir. There, there's a there's a big difference between how Americans practice Christianity. And I understand you're an atheist, but see. Islam is not just religion, it's their culture. Their culture is their very essence, their very being. They pray five times a day towards Mecca. To be a good Muslim, before you die, you have to make a pilgrimage to Mecca unless you're otherwise told you cannot because you're too ill, too utterly whatever, but you must make the attempt. The greetings. It's all in Mecca. The Lake of Muslim. Uh, may God be with you. Whenever it is very common, their language, when they're speaking to each other, it's very common for them to say, uh, all alone, this will happen. It is, they are so immersed in it. And what you've done is you completely trashed their essence, their being. They find it very very, very offensive. I'm not Muslim. I find it offensive. I find this on the other side. It's very offensive. But you have that right. But you're way outside your bounds. First Amendment rights. This is what 
and I spent about seven and a half of my years all together living in other countries. Um, when we go to other countries, it's not uncommon for people to refer to us as ugly Americans. This is why we are referred to as ugly Americans. Because we're so concerned about our own rights, we don't care about other people's rights. As long as we get our say, but we don't care about the other people's say. All that aside, I've got here basically, I don't want to say he said, she said, but I've got two sides of the story that are in conflict with each other. I understand, and I've been in a Halloween parade, and I understand how noise can be, how difficult it is to get a hold, but man, I can't believe that if there was this kind of conflict going on in the middle of the street that somebody didn't step forward sooner to try and intervene that the police officer on the bicycle didn't stop and say, hey, let's break this up. You put your hand down, sir. You're not a witness. The preponderance, excuse me, the burden of proof is that the defendant, it must be proven that the defendant did with the intent to harass, annoy, or alarm another person. The Commonwealth, whether it's conflict or not, and yes, you should be t putting your hands on you. I don't know, I have your story that you did and his story that he did not. But another part of the element, as Mr. Thomas said, was, was the defendant's intent to harass, annoy, or alarm? Or was it his intent to try and have the offensive situation negated? If his intent was to harass, annoy, or alarm, I think there would have been a little bit more of an altercation something more substantial as far as testimony going on that there was a conflict. Because there is not, it is not proven to me beyond a reasonable doubt that this defendant is guilty of harassment. Therefore, I'm going to dismiss the charge. This is